Yeah, okay. Hi again. So I'm 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 definitely enjoying your take on things. And uh, I feel the need to address a few categories and add some stuff to the list that you talked about in the video. So um, first is about a year or two ago on YouTube, uh, a video was posted by a guy named Warren Pollock. Uh, his, his YouTube handle is We Pollock. And it's called Starve the Beast. I, and I think you're onto that kind of position, so you should probably check it out. Um, that video may not be up anymore because I've heard Warren say he's going to take down some of his videos, so you should probably check it out. Uh, let's see. So, starving the beast, right? So, I have a short list of the stuff that you should do to starve the beast. So, first, you should stop using credit cards. Start using cash. Two, uh, consume locally. and if you don't know where it's from, I think it's safe to assume it's not local. Uh, buy from family-owned businesses and avoid many of the corporations that support the structure. And it's, you know, it's not going to be easy to find out which corporations are good and basically which ones suck ass. Uh, it's important to remember that, you know, not every corporation is evil incarnate. Many are, but not all. It's not a zero-sum game, right? See if barter's an option for you. Avoid consumption, taxes, and you help to starve the beast. Uh, working outside the tax structure is why the government frowns on barter, because they can't tax it, right? Uh, flea markets, shopping clubs, co-ops. Um, pay retail prices to area farmers willing to sell produce at your door, right? Uh, number five, overconsumption is part of the problem. You know, as a New Yorker who's lived in California for many years, it always surprised me how California has such amazing weather, yet folks drive places they could easily walk to. Yo, don't drive when a bicycle or walking will do. do number six, don't eat processed foods. Let's not even get into how nasty some of that food is for you. Seven, cons conserve energy. I mean, 5% of the world's population consumes 25% of the world's energy. Do you think that kind of paradigm is going to continue in a world where Asians are willing to pay more for it? <laughs> Hell no. 8. Solar cooker. Got one? Got kids? Make one this weekend. Use it. It's great for beans, tomato sauce, you name it. Garden at home. Start a herb garden on your windowsill if you have to. I planted a lemon and lime tree last year out back, and I annually grow basil bought from the local farmer's co-op. Drive, drive slower. Not only do you save energy, you avoid tickets, too. Unplug electrics that suck energy, like computer monitors. F fill your refrigerator with water. When, when your fridge is full, it's more efficient. Plus, you know, you have the water on hand in case of emergency. I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? But I think probably the most important thing I wanted to stress in, in this response video is what I feel is really some truth, and, I, and I'm not hearing it a lot, and that is that Chinese workers are not your enemy, right? They have families and they have dreams just like you do, and they literally just realize some of the freedoms that we all take for granted. So don't hate them. Just because they're willing to work for less and you aren't doesn't make them any less a person than you. You know, they've seen your lifestyle, our lifestyle, and you know what? They want some of it. I, I for one, don't blame them. So if you really think about it, these Chinese folks, they're the grease that keeps the wheel rolling, right? I mean, should they ever occupy Beijing or Shanghai or Shenzhen, it's game over as far as I'm concerned. So. Thanks for listening.